I'm joined now by Yes Campaigner and Convener of Scotland's Solidarity Socialist Party, Tommy Sheridan. Welcome to the Sunday Politics. Thank you, Andrew. A tax cut for big business, an economy dependent on big oil, the Queen as head of state, membership of the world's premier nuclear alliance of capitalist nations. Is that the socialist Scotland you're fighting for? Absolutely not, Andrew. That's the SNP's prospectus, and they're right. perfectly entitled to promote it. They won the election in 2007. They won it again in 2011, so they're entitled to put forward their vision of an independent Scotland. It's not mine, and it's not the majority of Scotland, I think, yet. We'll find that out in two years' time. But, Andrew, see you on Thursday. We're not voting for a political party. We're not voting for the SNP or Alex Salmond. We're voting for a freedom as a country. Uh, That's why people are going to vote yes uh, of course, on but, Thursday. But a, a lot of people, like yourself, are voting for that, what you call freedom, because you think it will be a more left-wing Scotland, or the chance of a more left-wing Scotland. Now, you've already got free prescriptions, no tuition fees, free care for the elderly, all that you have now. You might not in future have that if public spending is over-dependent on the price of oil, over which you have no control. We don't have to worry about one single resource. We've already got 20% of the fishing stock in Europe. We've already got 60% of oil, as you know. We've, we've already got 25% of the wind, wave and solar generation. But oil Scotland. would be 50% of we, your we, revenues. We, 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 if you let me finish this point... We, 15%, I should say. 15, it's not 50%. We, 15. As a, we, as an independent country, have huge resources natural resources, but also people resources. We've got five first-class universities. We've got a food and beverages industry that's the envy of the world. We have the ability to produce the resources and the revenues that won't just maintain the health service, won't just maintain education, but will develop health and develop education. And I don't want us to stand still, uh, I understand Andrew. That. I want to redistribute wealth in Scotland, but, not to stand still. But all the projections of public spending for an independent Scotland show, whether it's the Scottish Government or independent, that to keep spending at the current level, never mind to increase it, you need a strong price of oil and you're dependent on this commodity which goes up and down and sideways. That's a gamble. I've got to laugh, Andrew, because I've been told, you know, that the most pessimistic has been the oil's running out in 40 years, 40 years the oil's running out, you know, help my bulb, panic stations, the oil's running out. See, if you get told by the BBC they can only guarantee employment for the next 40 years, you'd be over the moon, but, Andrew. But the I'm not talking is, about the, the next 40 years, I'm talking about the next five. No, I'm talking about the next to maintain 40. public spending, you need 50% of your revenue revenues to come from oil, and that is not a guarantee. Of course it's a guarantee that the minimum, the minimum survival of the oil resources is 40 years. Some people say a lot longer. For instance, oilandgaspeople.com. Please get your viewers to go on to their internet and look up oilandgaspeople.com. They've just produced a report last week that the BBC has disgracefully ignored. It suggests quite clearly, based on expert evidence, expert analysis, the west coast of Scotland, not the North Sea, the west coast has 100 years of oil there to be extracted. Why has it not been extracted? Because in 1981, Mr Michael Heseltine, Defence Minister, says we can't extract that oil because we've got Trident nuclear missiles going up and down there. Well, here's the solution. Let's get rid of Trident and let's extract the oil. Scotland is potentially one of the richest countries in the planet and we're going to redistribute that wealth for ordinary working people, Andrew. You're a Trotskyite. Why have you failed to learn Trotsky's famous dictum, socialism in one country is impossible? Well, do you know something? Revolutions and change aren't just single events, Andrew. They don't just happen. What's going to happen here on Thursday is a democratic revolution. The people are fed up being patronised, being lied to by this uh, mob in Westminster uh, who have absolutely used and abused us for far course. too long. I the small about, people now have a voice and they're going to use it. What about socialism in one country? Oh, socialism will hopefully Mr. Mr. develop... Mr Trotsky warned you against that. Socialism will hopefully develop... You know something? Leon's not alive right now. The no He's campaign, alive in your heart. The no campaign represents the past. The Yes campaign represents the future, Andrew. That's the truth of the matter. What we are going to do in an independent Scotland is we are going to tackle poverty and inequality and the scourge of low pay. I'm not accepting the certainty, and it is a certainty. If we vote no on Thursday, there will be more low pay on Friday, more poverty on Friday, more food banks on Friday. Why? I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be listening, lectured by these big banks. Oh, you vote yes, we're going to leave the country. The big banks that got us into the mess. The only banks that will be closing in an independent Scotland are the food banks. That's the ones that will be closing, Andrew. If you ever got your way, not just for independence, but for the type of Scotland that you would like to see, 
much more tax on the affluent, state control of business, nationalization of the banks. I mean, the roads to Carlisle and Berwick will be clogged with people fleeing the country. Yes, wanting to come into Scotland because the really? working class of England are well, they hoping, come up here. hoping in their hearts that the people of Scotland have got the bottle to take on Westminster. You don't got the bottle to you break do the not British seriously And believe the working that. class of the Liverpools, the Newcastles, the working class of London are saying, "Good on the jocks. They're actually taking on big business. They're actually taking on the bosses. And when we win our independence and we start investing in health, investing in education, building social housing, the people of England are going to be saying, "Hey." We can do that as well, and they will rediscover the radical traditions. But in wanting to build socialism in one country, it really means you're fighting for the few rather than the many. Uh, you're bailing out of the socialist battle for Britain because you think it's going to be easier to try and make it work here. Andrew, Andrew, think globally, act locally. We are going to build socialism in Scotland, but I want socialism across the world. I want my brothers and sisters in England and Wales to be encouraged by what we do so that they can reject the Westminster consensus as well. We had the three Stooges coming up there for, 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 for London. Three millionaires all united in one thing, austerity. Doesn't it matter whether Miliband wins the next election? He's already said he will stick to the Tory spending cuts. Why vote for Miliband? You wouldn't trust him to run a bath, never mind run a country, for goodness sake. Let's just see whether any of this is realistic, though, uh, in this great socialist vision for Scotland that you have. At the last Scottish election, your old Socialist Party got 8,000 votes. The Tories got 30 times more votes Absolutely. here in Absolutely. Scotland than you. Yeah. So where's the appetite yeah. in Scotland for your Marxist ideology? We might not win it, Andrew. We might, <laughs> might not win not. it. We might not win it, but you know what? See, in two years' time, see when we have our Scottish general election in an independent Scotland, guess who's going to decide who runs Scotland? The Scots. Yeah, but, That's the difference. We're not but, going to be in political they handcuffs who any longer. Won the Holyrood election. Absolutely. And you got 8,000 votes. Listen, I, 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 don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem. The SNP won the 2007 election. It was a democratic election. They then won the 2011 election. Do you know why they won it? Because they picked up the clothes that the Labour Party has thrown away. They picked up the clothes of social democracy, of protecting the health They've become free the left of centre party. Of course party they now. have. Of course they, they have. Not your left. Well, well, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. But there are people within the SNP who believe in public ownership. There are people in the SNP who believe the NHS should be written into our constitutions, never for sale. There's people in the SNP who believe the Royal Mail should be returned to public ownership. That's you, all there. That's in black and white. Do you agree with George Galloway? that this is potentially a crisis for Scottish Labour? Oh, listen, Scottish Labour's finished, for goodness sakes. They're absolutely finished. George is absolutely right in that. Scottish Labour is finished. The irony of ironies is okay. Labour in Scotland has more chance of recovery in an independent Scotland than they have of a no vote because Labour in Scotland in an independent country are going to have to rediscover the traditions of Keir Hardy, the conditions of Jimmy, the, 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 the ideas of Jimmy Maxim, because at the end of the day, right now, they are to the right of the SNP as a political but, party. But you see, that this uh, I understand your socialist vision. I understand that. It's where the appetite is. And you look at the people who want independence in Scotland. I mean, one of your comrades on the yes side is Brian Souter. Uh, a man who fought against the repeal of, uh, of, of fought against homosexual rights in Scotland. Another of your allies would seem to be Rupert Murdoch, the man who engineered your downfall. Could, couldn't, I couldn't care less. And um, you, you said engineered my downfall. I'm still here. No, no, uh, I understand. His papers closed. So, so, so down, let, let's be careful with that one. But, but the point is, whether Rupert Murdoch, Brian Souter, or any other millionaire wants to support independence, I couldn't care less. This vote on Thursday is not about the millionaires. It's about the millions, and it's about the millions saying here in Scotland, we are not going to be used and abused any longer. We are voting for our Would independence. Would you rather not have their support? I, I listen, I couldn't care less whether the support's there. You know, you know who's supporting the union. Oh. You know it's the millionaires, it's the big businesses, it's the big banks, it's the Orange Order, it's oh. the BNP, well, it's the on, UK. Brian, Brian They're the Suter's ones that are supporting it. I, listen, I, you're giving me a stray. You've given me a stray well, that's, Gil, that's, that's wandered Gilbert's into the campaign. Are you seriously, Andrew, going to argue with me? Are you seriously going to argue with me that the establishment isn't united to try and save the union? That's what they're doing. The BBC so far, come on, you have been a disgrace in your coverage of the campaign so far. Not you personally, you don't have editorial Did control. You see my interview but with but, Alistair but your, BB, on your BBC coverage generally has been right. a disgrace and the people know it. Oilandgas.com, 
Go and look it up. Why is that not featured? Yep. Why is the yep. idea of 100 years of oil not featured in the campaign? Because so the BBC doesn't want people to know sounds, about it. Sounds like maybe you're... Are you getting in your excuses if you lose? Not <laughs> at all lose! Turning you've got to be play. kidding. Is this look at the face of somebody that's looking to lose? You're convinced We're you're going, going to you're win. You're convinced you're going to win. 60-40. 60-40 down 60 the line. And absolutely. Three. There is a momentum that you guys aren't seeing in the working class housing estates and villages of Scotland. Working class people are fed up being taken for granted. Fed Fed up been lied to by these people dragging us into illegal wars, tax cuts for the millionaires, bedroom tax for the poor. They are going to use their power. They very, very rarely get any power. They've got power on Thursday. Are you happy and they're going to use it and they're going to vote for freedom. Are you happy the way the BBC's treated you today? Uh, so far, yes. I'm well, still, no, still, still no been offered a wee coffee right enough, but maybe that'll happen. Well, that's obviously an example of our bias. Tommy Sheridan, thank you for now. But again, we're going to speak to you, thank uh, you. later along with George Galloway.